another day, another dress. You might be thinking, but Kat, you don't need a dress. I didn't say I needed it, did I? I want a new dress. Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be making a dress, unsurprising, I know, here on this channel. It is a brand new thing. I've never made a dress before. This dress is actually a very special idea that I had because it actually came around in a way that is not very common for me, which was fabric first. <laughs> so I saw this fabric when I was out shopping in Edinburgh with my family. I didn't need fabric. I wasn't going to buy fabric. We were there to get something for my mum. And yet I walked away with two cuts of fabric. And what I bought them both because I saw them both together. So the first fabric I used to make this cottage core romantic inspired apron, which I made a video about a couple weeks ago, so you can go and check that out. And today we're making the dress that I wore and I made to wear under that. Um it all in my mind when I saw them together, I had this really romantic idea of the both of them together with like the frills of the apron, the sloped shoulders of a dress, a full skirt. I had a couple of keywords which were romantic, cottagecore, um, versatile, but also with historical roots because that's always what I want, like to do. I don't, you know, I don't often do very specific like this dress is from spring 1903. Um, I do historical roots, so this has some of the style lines that were particular to this decade or whatever. I originally thought it would be a dress. But then as I sat down to think more about it, I thought separates would be more realistic and versatile for my wardrobe. So at the end of the day, I really want to make pieces that I'll get lots of wear out, that I'll use constantly, that, you know, really have a place in my wardrobe. And so I decided to make them into separates, a skirt and a shirt waist. And when I decided that, the decade that really came to mind um, was the 1860s. And I know, I know you thought I was going to say the 1890s, but I did it. It was the 1860s. I really like that silhouette because it's got the really romantic drop shoulders with the full sleeves. Um, I've made a couple of shirts like that on the channel here. I'll link those videos down below. Um, so I guess technically it's not really a new blouse, but it is together with the skirt. It's a different thing. So <laughs> we're going to count that. I'm not super familiar with that time period, um, so I decided to do some research and for that I just went to my bookshelf and I started picking out books. Uh, the little librarian in me was very happy. By looking some, at some of the references I wanted to figure out general pattern shapes because I will be drafting my own patterns for this. Um, and also sort of hem length, what was the common length, hem length across these skirts. Um, and I measured a few and came out that they were about 3 meters, And that is, you know, a nice amount of fabric, I was pretty happy with that. As I mentioned, the fabric that caught my eye was this lightweight uh, plaid cotton um, and I only bought three meters of it because it was a little pricey I think it was about 12 pounds per meter and as an impulse purchase on a day out where I wasn't meant to buy fabric and with the apron as well I just really didn't want to commit to more fabric than I really thought I would need so I bought three meters and that was <laughs> just enough <laughs> I drafted my patterns uh, for the blouse, I just used one of the basic slopers I had that is drafted to my measurements and because it's an unfitted shape it was very simple, I just readjusted the neckline a little bit uh, and the armhole and then I made sleeves which are basically just large rectangles with a very shallow sleeve head uh, and then I did the skirt as well which is panelled, it has a centre front panel, two side panels and a big rectangle for the back. There's actually an option as well to add more side panels, but I didn't have enough fabric to actually cut that out. So even though I drafted them, I didn't I didn't put them into the skirt because I didn't have enough fabric. But, but with it all drafted, it was time to cut. Okay, so here are my panels that are prepped. Um, the first thing I need to do, needed to do is to fold in the seam allowance on the front, and this is for the button placket. So obviously you can add a separate pattern piece, which is just a rectangle for a button placket, but I actually inbuilt it into the pattern because I just thought it'd be easier. And so one side turns under like this, which will be for the buttonholes, and then one side turns out like this for the buttons. I actually might not do this. I know this is the proper way to do it, but I don't love it. So I might just turn them both inwards because why not? And 
Typically, you can top stitch this by machine. Ma bleh. Can't talk today. Typically, you can top stitch this by machine, but instead, I'm just gonna hand sew it because I don't know. I like hand sewing, and I just feel like doing it. You know. Once the button placket was secure, I moved on to doing the pin tucks on either side of the center front. I decided there would be a cluster of three on either side. I'm not sure why, but I just feel like pin tucks come in threes. Then it was time for some machine sewing. There's something very ritualistic to me about that first winding of a bobbin in a matching colour. had four straightforward seams to do. So I can't quite recall, recall what the last voice update was. I, I've just gotten so bad at <laughs> vlogging you guys. But basically, here is the, the shirt waist thing. All I did was I sewed the pin tucks at the front uh, by hand because I don't know what possessed me to do that. But I did, and then I sewed up the side seams and the shoulder seams. So they're just sewn up with a French seam, and a French seam is when you basically sew two seams and then the inside's encased. As you can see, it's a very, very clean finish. Um, there's a couple of reasons of why I picked that, uh, mostly because this is a very lightweight fabric, so it could withstand this type of finish. It also means that I don't have to finish it inside by hand at all, and it also means that there's no visible top stitching, all things that I liked. So I think I'll be constructing most of the seams on this uh, skirt and shirt combo with French seams. So now the next step is actually to work on the sleeves so that I can set them in, but I prefer to do the cuffs before. So do the cuffs first, then add them to the sleeves, then add the sleeve on. So for the cuffs, I've just drafted a little pattern, which I've already put away, um, and then I cut out these rectangles out of the <laughs> smallest amount of fabric I had. So I actually had to, I drafted the pattern to be on the fold. So this would be a fold instead of a seam, but I didn't have enough fabric. So I just cut it into two. This was the cuff on the side, and this is the cuff outside. And you can see it has more because I'm planning to pin tuck this too. And today I am not in a mood to hand sew. So I think these pin tucks will be by machine. <laughs> so, oh well, whatever, it's my dress. I can do whatever I want. So the next step is actually to sew this seam, press it open, Open, trim it, press it, press it open. I'm going to uh, understitch it as well, just in case. And then I will be doing the pin tucks on the cuffs, and then I can sew them onto the bottom of the sleeves, which I think need to be gathered first. And then once I do the sides, I can leave this. I'll finish these edges nicely as well, because this will need to remain open, so I can get the sleeves on and off. So that's a lot of sewing, but maybe we can get it done tonight. So let's go. Okay, so here we go. Here we've got the cuffs. I've sewn them and I've understitched, which is just when you press the seam allowance of a seam towards the wrong side, the lining or the inside or whatever, and then you just stitch as close to the seam as you can. And that means that when you fold it and you press it, it's way less likely for it to roll up and show. Um, yeah, it's a really useful little thing. And so what the th I'm now ta tackling the pin tucks and I thought I'd just show you how I do them. This is by no means the proper way to do them, it's just how I do them. So I mark my fold line. I just feel like that's the easiest way for me to do it. And then um, you can barely see it here, but this is the sort of heat disappearing pen. The friction pens that I really like. Do, do please check on your fabric because sometimes they do leave a residue behind. Um, but what I do is I just fold it across that line and then I press it, which as you can see here, and I do each pin tack 
at a time, iron it into place once I've stitched it, and then I mark the second one to make sure that I'm marking from that fold because my stitching isn't 100% accurate, let's be honest. So yeah, I'm just gonna start tackling these and I think there'll be about five on the cuff if I can fit them. I had to sort of shorten the pattern a little bit because I didn't have enough fabric. So we'll find out how many I can fit. Okay, so I've made good progress. So it turns out it's four pin tucks. Uh, well, they're not pin, they're just tucks because they're a quarter of an inch wide. But it turns out it's four tucks per cuff. They'll fold here to the inside like that. And I've also ran gathering stitches by machine on the bottom of the cuff. Uh, so I could gather it down and pin it nicely. And then I'm just gonna run this through the machine. However, I've also run gathering stitches across the top of the sleeve because sleep because I was basically on autopilot. And then I remembered that I actually wanted to take in the fullness of the top of the sleeve with more tucks. But now that I've sewn the gathering lines, I just remembered how easy it would be to just gather up and set it in place rather than do a lot of these little tucks again. Mm, I might just gather it. Ooh, I'm feeling very lazy today. Okay, so the sleeves are ready for attachment. You can see here, they're looking a little short on the dress form, but I think that's because it's way off the shoulder, so it'll actually be attached like down here, and I'm hoping it'll be long enough, but I literally used every inch of fabric I had. So if it isn't, it just wouldn't, wouldn't be. I attached the cuffs, I gathered the bottom, and then I finished the inside by hand, and I left a little slit so to make sure I can get my hand in and out, and I think I'll just close it with a cute little button. I think they look very neat, but I also wanted to show you the difference between machine sewn uh, pin tucks, or in this case tucks because they're not too, they're not very small, and the hand ones. Um, I have way more control over these, and so you can see that I was able to hide the stitching line a bit better, and they're way more more discreet. And these are a little wonkier. <laughs> However, they were way faster, so you know, pros and cons. However, what I did wanted to tell you is I'm going to do some of the finishing on the actual main shirt waist before I add the sleeves and that's just because it becomes harder to maneuver under the machine with sleeves. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually bind the neckline. Ideally you'd want to do this with a bias binding but all I have left of my fabric is this <laughs> rectangle <laughs> of fabric so we're going to try and do it with a straight binding and pray it works alright. And for that I'm just going to sew it by machine then flip it to the inside and hand sew it down. Uh, then I think I will add buttonholes and buttons. I haven't decided whether to do these by hand or by machine. I feel like I've already put so much effort into doing it by hand that I should probably do it by hand, but it'll take so much longer. I haven't decided, so I'll bind the neck first and then decide. Then I can attach the sleeves, hem the bottom, and I'll be done. So we've got a slight issue, which you might be able to spot immediately. Um, yeah, the sleeves are kind of like three quarter length, they're too short, um, but basically what happened was I only bought, when I bought fabric for this, I didn't have a clear idea of the dress or what I wanted to make with it in mind. And it was a little pricey and it was an unexpected purchase. So I only bought three meters. And when I was cutting everything out, because the skirt is so full to be in this 1860s style, I ended up having to really like <laughs> make do with the bit that I had. And so I shortened the sleeves a little bit, but I didn't think it would be this noticeable. Unfortunately, it is. But basically because I thought this is an off the shoulder look, I thought that would be enough. But I've cut off so much that I've got... Ugh, what is this? Three inches at least missing. And I didn't even have enough fabric to make, like, 
longer cuffs or anything, so I think it's just going to have to be short. That's okay, because this is for summer, so I think it'll be alright. I kind of wanted it to be able to wear it with like the sleeves rolled up. That's still cute, right? Ugh. Well, the, the pr second problem was that I measured the cuffs to be wide enough for it to fit around my wrist, not around half my arm. <laughs> so the cuffs also don't close. This is a series of issues, man. But we're just gonna do, we're just gonna deal. Um, it's just, <laughs> we roll with the punches here on this channel. So I literally, there's nothing I can do. There's no more fabric. I can't, I could make a different cuff in a different fabric. Um, I don't think it's a big enough issue to warrant that. So instead it's gonna be one like this, just open. A little bit more casual, but whatever. And then you can also wear it, I guess, up here. Make more of a poofy sleeve. It's kind of cute. Anyway, the sleeve's only based it on, so now I'm gonna go and sew it down by machine, and then I'll press these gathers all very nicely, uh, and then I'll add the other sleeve. After that debacle, it was time to tackle the skirt. I used a bunch of French seams to connect all the panels together except one. Because the back panel is cut on the fold, I decided to do a side closure, like in some of the examples in my books. I just wanted to talk you through um, briefly about what I've done with these layers and why. So I've added two layers of fabric as you saw. This is a strip of I think a linen blend or something that was exactly the length of the hem that I found randomly in my stash and it actually doesn't like look too bad against the fabric so it was a match made in heaven. And this is just a hem facing. You add a hem facing to skirts to finish the hem, obviously, but also to add some um, more stability and sort of body to the hem, because that means that when you wear this skirt, it'll flare out a bit better in the shape that you've cut it. The other thing I've added is this layer of what I think might be woven interfacing from my stash. I just wanted something lightweight, um, that I had enough of to cut the bottom shape of the skirt out of and that was the only thing. I thought I had some crochet organdy in my stash but I don't. So instead I just used what I had, that's also a very Victorian thing to do. Um, and so I just cut it out in the like strips and then I sewed them together and then I sewed it all down to the hem in one go by layering it and then I pressed the seam open and then all the things to the inside and I've pinned them into place. And um, this is a really good way of adding body to your skirt without doing the full panels and interlining because there's a few advantages to this. Number one, you need less fabric. So obviously you only need a few strips of the bottom half of your skirt for this. Number two, you move the bulk away from the waist. So obviously if you've interlined the top and then you're gathering and pleating the top, this will be way bulkier if you have more layers of fabric up here. And this way you don't, which is really nice. Um, so that's why I did it this way. Now I just wanted to talk to you really quickly about these folds. So you might think this looks really ugly, I think so too, but it's just a nature of putting a rectangle of fabric onto a curved hem. There's more fabric at the bottom than there is at the top, and so you have to kind of fold that in. There are a couple of ways to avoid this in case you don't want to do this. Um, you can cut this out in bias, in, on the bias of the fabric, which means you can gently shape it. You can also cut out the curved panels of the skirt. You can cut out the curved bottoms instead of a rectangle. So like just cut the bottom off of your pattern and do that. And that means that will be the exact same shape. I just couldn't be arsed to be honest. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered so I just cut rectangles. Um, and then the last thing you can do is you can gently gather this. So if you run a, a gathering thread or something you can ease it so that it lays a bit flatter. 
I'm too lazy for any of that. I just do these pleats because you can't see them from the outside. So, whatever. So now I'm just gonna do two rows of a running stitch to secure down the facings and the interlining. So the one at the top, I'm gonna try to do as discreetly as I can. The one at the bottom, I can actually hide in this, under this tuck, which is really nice. So just a bunch of hand sewing ahead of me and then the hem will be done. So a few things have happened since the last clip. I really can't remember what was the last thing I showed you, but I'm pretty sure I was working on the skirt and I had just pleated it. So I did attach a really simple plain waistband on here and a little closure, which is just a hook and a, little, a couple of little eyes, depending on how tight I want to wear the skirt. Uh, I think it looks good. This uh, closure, because of the pocket, isn't as clean as I wanted it to be. I just don't know why I didn't just think to put the pocket in the normal side seam. <laughs> but it's kind of done now, so that's it. The skirt is finished. Um, the blouse, you might notice, has had some differences. So as you know, I messed up the sleeves. Um, so what I did was, with the very, very last scrap, of this fabric that I had, I added some lace insertion to the top and the bottom, and then I kind of inserted it into the sleeves. But by doing that, I kind of messed up even more because I measured, I tried it on and I measured where my elbow was sitting, but I cut it and I added it in the middle of my elbow rather than cutting it so that this strip landed in the middle of my elbow. So it's a little bit further down my arm, but it is what it is. I can't really undo that at this point. And then because I had just enough lace, I added some to the cuffs as well because it was just enough and I thought that was meant to be. The last thing that this needs is a button on the cuffs and a loop and it'll be done. Overall, I think it's really cute, but I kind of want to see it all together, like properly dressed up to really make up my mind, um, which I hope to be doing later today. So let's wait for that, for that and see. And that is it. It was a long journey. I thought this project would be a lot easier, um, but I think making them separate might have added more work. I don't know. I tried to make it work. I think the fabric constrictions made me be a lot more creative because, you know, if I had more fabric, I would have cut the sleeves to full length um, <laughs> instead of shortening them too much and then having to do the lace insertion to try and give them a bit more room. I would have had enough fabric to cut two side panels and make the skirt fuller. But, you know, this isn't a would have, could have, should have, what could have been channel. It's I had what fabric I had and here we are. I think altogether these two pieces are really nice. Um, they're beautifully lightweight and comfortable and I think they'll be a great summer addition to my wardrobe if it ever stops raining. Yeah, I think they go really well together. There's one more difference I made in the end after I tried it on for the photos, which was I was really unhappy with how the waistband looked. I think it's just because there wasn't enough tension to really keep it in place. Um, and it wasn't really firm enough to give a really nice silhouette. So when I got home, I unpicked the inside of the waistband, flipped it up and faced it with something stronger so that it was a bit wider and firmer. This isn't necessarily a historical thing to do. I just think it would be flatter, more flatting on my body. So I will have photos with a nicer skirt or a nicer looking waistband in the future. But for now, have a look at the dress. Mm -hmm.